Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your ACCA F9 financial management teacher Naveed. We'll be doing a question on inventory management and receivable management today. The question is called question PKA from December 2007. December 2007. The reason I'm doing such an old question is that it tests economic order quantity in detail it tests receivable also it tests lead time and buffer stock and once we do this question I'll tell you how to do it in comparatively easy way also and the question you can obviously google if you if you want to but I have provided you the link uh, in the description also you can download from the link that I have provided you this question also includes some forex but we'll ignore that because today we'll be just discussing inventory management and we'll be discussing receivables management right all right so the first question part a is say is saying identify the objectives of working capital management and discuss the conflict that may arise between them this is comparatively an easy question but don't get excited it's just for three marks so just give him three small paragraphs and that would be enough right so what are the objectives of working capital management well there are two main objectives liquidity and profitability so it's liquidity and profitability right if you keep low level of working capital you will improve your liquidity right I'll give you an example for example if we keep low level of stock for example we'll tie up less money in the stock and then we'll have more money in our pockets right similarly profitability if you increase the level of working capital though liquidity will not be desirable but your profitability will increase so the second part of the question is in this question if you see the first part of the question says that what are the objectives of working capital management so give him the objectives of working capital management liquidity and profitability and the second part of the question is that the con what is the conflict between the objectives of working capital so the second conflict conflict between the objectives of working capital are obviously liquidity versus profitability so basically there is a trade there is a trade off between liquidity and profitability if you improve your liquidity then you won't be able to improve profitability so basically you have to tell to the examiner that you will be looking for a balance between liquidity and profitability or you can say that you will be looking at uh, looking for a balance uh, of uh, working capital you should not keep too much working capital you should not keep too less working capital so objectives and and conflicts and this way the examiner can give you you can easily get three marks out of three marks but don't write too much because you'll be out of time if you write too much in the exam for such a simple question you can say that this is kind of gift from the examiner to you he won't give you that gift nowadays well I hope so you'll get the gift but I don't think so okay so the second part of the question is calculate the cost of current ordering policy and determine the saving that would be made using economic order quantity so again there are two parts of the same question and the first question is saying calculate the current cost current cost of current ordering policy and the second part of the question is determine the saving if you use economic order quantity rather than your current policy right the third question is about receivables management so we'll skip that at the moment we'll see uh, we'll, we'll solve the first two parts part A and part B first and then we'll come to part C 
so let's start reading this question if you want you can pause the video and read it once and then you'll read it with me all right so pka is a european company that sells goods solely within the europe the recently appointed financial manager of the pka has been investigating the working capital management of the company and has gathered the following information inventory management the current policy is to order 100000 units when the inventory level falls to 35000 so in one order currently you order 100000 units and when the inventory level falls to 35000 then you order that 100000 and this is what we call reorder level when you reach to this level then you order 100000 so let's say if this is your inventory and you are using the inventory in production and when you reach to 35000 then you order again and how much do you order 100000 so this would be your reorder level right okay the forecast demand to meet the production requirement during the next year is 625000 so this is basically your demand demand d the cost of placing and processing an order is 250 euros so the cost of ordering one order i'll call it co is 250 euros while the cost of holding a unit in the store is 0.5 or half a euro and this is cost of holding per unit per year so cost of holding one unit for one year is ch 0.5 euros both costs are expected to be constant during the next year orders are received two two weeks after being placed with the supplier okay so once you place the order then you get that order within two weeks this is what we call lead time you should assume a 50 week year and the demand is constant throughout the year right well this is the assumption of economic order quantity so basically it's giving you the hint that you'll be using economic order quantity somewhere in the question right all right so what was the requirement the requirement was in part, part a we have done already calculate the current the cost of current ordering policy the cost of current ordering policy so let's solve this question now part b all right so what would be the total cost of the ordering policy the current ordering policy what would be the total cost of current ordering policy question number four sorry about that so current ordering policy what is the cost of current ordering policy so this cost will include basically two cost cost of ordering and cost of holding if you add cost of ordering and cost of holding together this will give you total cost and what is the formula for the cost of ordering when you calculate cost of ordering obviously you multiply number of orders with the cost of one order
Well, the cost of one order in our question is, we said it is CO, and the cost of one order was, I guess it was $30, cost of one order, CO, no, that's 250 euros, 250 euros, so the cost of ordering, of cost of one order is 250 euros, and number of orders, well, we are not given number of orders, but if you use the formula which is demand divided by quantity demand divided by quantity it will give you number of orders like the demand is <coughs> we said that the demand was 625,000 in the whole year and then you order 100,000 in one order right so this will give you number of orders and 625,000 divided by 100,000 multiplied by 250,000 will be your total ordering cost 625,000 divided by 100,000 multiplied by 250 would give you 1563 one five six three dollars and that would be your total cost of ordering and then your cost of holding cost of holding for the cost of holding you have to multiply average inventory with cost of holding one unit for one year so average inventory multiply by cost of holding one unit for one year you have to be very careful if you are given lead time in your question or minimum inventory in the question then you have to add minimum inventory to that also so minimum inventory level or minimum inventory which is also called buffer stock right are you given minimum inventory in the question no you have to find it out right so let's put figures inside first so cost of holding stock would be average inventory the formula to find average inventory is Q quantity divided by 2 this this would be your average inventory right so quantity divided by 2 plus minimum inventory <coughs> multiply by cost of holding one unit for one year which is CH so cost of holding stock would be quantity how much is the quantity well we order hundred thousand in one order so hundred thousand divided by two minimum inventory we are not given minimum inventory and we have to find it out and I'll say this is your working one multiply by cost of holding one unit for one year and I think I remember it and it is half a euro point five zero euro right and I leave some space for it to calculate the co cost of holding and we will find our minimum inventory here and I'll leave some more space to calculate the total cost when we will add cost of ordering and cost of holding together so working number one minimum inventory <coughs> the 
the formula to calculate minimum inventory is minimum stock level minimum inventory level is your reorder level minus average usage in the average lead time so average usage multiply by average lead time which basically means that how much inventory you will lose you will use when you will uh, when you have not received the inventory yet you have ordered it but you have not received the inventory yet right so obviously the higher is the time and higher is the usage between uh, in that time you will keep high level of minimum stock so minimum stock level is equal to reorder level 35000 average usage well the demand was 625000 and we have 50 weeks in the year so this will give you usage per week usage per week or average usage per week multiply by two weeks lead time as per our question two weeks is the lead time so this will give you usage of the two weeks time right so minimum stock level is Six twenty-five thousand divided by fifty, multiply by two. This is twenty-five thousand, and thirty-five thousand minus twenty-five thousand will be ten thousand units. So we should keep twenty ten thousand units. Um, at least we should keep ten thousand units in our stock, and that is the minimum level of stock. So now the cost of holding is. We'll put the figures in, and that would be. 100,000 divided by 2 plus 10,000 minimum stock and our cost of holding would be 100,000 divided by 2 is 50,000 50,000 plus 100 of uh, 50,000 plus 10,000 would be 60,000 multiplied by 0.5 would be 30,000 so 30,000 is our holding cost so, our ordering cost was 1,563 and our holding cost is 30,000 and if you add them together, this will give you 30,000 plus 1563 that would be 31,563 31,563 euros obviously everything is in euros so the question was what is the total cost of current ordering policy so the current ordering policy will cost us 31,563 now we have to compare that with uh, the saving from economic order quantity because the second part of the same question is saying they determine the saving that would be made using economic order quantity well to calculate the saving from economic order quantity obviously you have to calculate what would be the cost from economic order quantity and then we will see if economic order quantity is costing us more or our current policy is costing us more so let's calculate economic cost from economic order quantity so cost of economic order quantity if you order in economic order quantity then what would be the cost well the formula for economic order quantity is two fish and chips basically 2 multiply by cost of ordering multiply by demand divided by cost of holding and then the square root right I call it 2 fish and chips because it looks like 2 cart divided by chips and maybe in the restaurant the square root is the restaurant 
price so economic order quantity is 2 multiplied by cost of ordering cost of one order which is 250 euros multiply by demand which is 625,000 divided by cost of holding one unit for one year which is half a euro right so if you use your calculator and find the economic order quantity that would be 2 multiplied by 250 hold on 2 multiplied by 250 multiply by 625,000 divided by 0.5 square root that would be 25,000 units so economic order quantity policy will suggest that we should order 25,000 units in one order let me remind you that currently we are ordering 100,000 units in one order and economic order quantity suggests that we should order 25,000 units well if you order less obviously your number of orders will increase and your ordering cost will increase but your holding cost will decrease and holding cost uh, as we calculated above it was 30,000 if you order 100,000 right so now let's calculate the cost using the same formula same methodology using in the same methodology we will calculate the total cost for economic order quantity policy right so cost of ordering and cost of holding as we said that the cost of ordering is number of orders which is basically demand divided by quantity multiply by cost of one order which is CO so demand 625,000 demand is 625,000 divided by quantity this time we'll order not 100,000 we'll order 25,000 multiply by cost of one order which is 250 euros and this would be equal to 625,000 divide by 25,000 multiply by 250 and that would cost us 6,250 and then the cost of holding same formula would be used average inventory plus minimum stock multiply by cost of holding one unit for one year sometimes the student asks that why we should add minimum stock uh, in the formula why we have added minimum stock because this is the level of inventory that is not going to change it will always be here the minimum stock will always be here it's not going to change right uh, but the rest of the inventory obviously it decreases when you use it in the production it increases when you have uh, delivery outside right so the, the rest of the inventory will change but this is not going to change this will cost us always right so you have to multiply you have to add minimum stock uh, when you calculate your cost of holding because you have to hold it every time right then it means it is going to cost you right so cost of holding is average inventory which is quantity divided by 2 plus minimum stock you already calculated that was 10,000 cost of holding one unit for one year would be half a euro which is quantity this time quantity is 25,000 divided by 2 plus minimum stock is 10,000 multiply by 0 
and cost of holding would be 25,000 divided by 2 plus 10,000 multiplied by 0.5 and this would cost you 11,250 11,250 euros euros so total cost of ordering is 6250 total cost of holding is 11,250 and when you add them together this will give you a total cost total cost using economic order quantity obviously and plus 6250 Six two five zero will be seventeen thousand five hundred. Seventeen thousand five hundred. Our previous. So our previous policy or our current policy will cost us thirty one thousand five hundred and sixty three an economic order quantity would cost us seventeen thousand five hundred so obviously economic order quantity is better but this is not the question the question said that what would be the saving so the saving would be thirty one thousand five sixty five sixty three minus seventeen thousand five hundred and that would be the saving savings using economic order quantity would be 31,563 minus 17,500 and that would be equal to so 31,563 minus the answer would be 14,063 so you would be saving 14,063 if you use economic order quantity is there anything else that has been asked oh, no you haven't been asked anything else and in the start of the lecture I said that I'll be telling you uh, how you can calculate this question uh, in a slightly easy manner but it will give you the right answer but this won't be right for this question and I'll tell you why examiner basically is asking you calculate the current ordering policy so you have to calculate the current ordering policy and then you have to calculate the savings so you have to calculate obviously economic order quantity also but there is a quick way that you can use to calculate the savings directly right rather than doing the long calculation you can calculate the savings directly but obviously this won't be relevant for this question but this can be relevant uh, for uh, the MCQs questions for example because it will give you less marks and uh, you would be expected to calculate it quickly because you'll have you will not have uh, much time to spend so much on a question like this right so basically what you can do is what you can do is if you see you have give you have been given minimum inventory in both the you have been given minimum inventory in both economic order quantity and uh, our current policy uh, current ordering policy right or other words we can say that uh, the minimum inventory would be the same this is not going to change this is not going to change by the way uh, we um, by the way we order our inventory this is not going to change minimum inventory would be the same so if you think that you are comparing two policies and there are two things that uh, that would be present in both the policies maybe you can ignore the minimum inventory in both the calculations so if you calculate the minimum inventory in both the calculation then obviously you don't have to do all these working to calculate minimum inventory that you calculate 10,000 because you ignored it right so if you ignore it and let's quickly recalculate it let's quickly recalculate it 
and this hasn't been asked in the exam let me tell you that again so we can savings it hasn't been asked in the exam but maybe next time you'd be asked so if you ignore minimum inventory then the current policy would be ordering cost plus holding cost and the ordering cost is obviously number of orders which we said that the number of order is demand divided by quantity multiply by cost of uh, cost of one order which is 20, 625,000 demand divided by 100,000 quantity multiply by cost of one order 250 and this would be 625,000 divided by 100,000 multiply by 250 and that would be 1563 we have already calculated this one and holding cost because we ignored inventory it would be average inventory multiply by cost of holding one unit for one year and the average inventory is Q divided by 2 quantity divided by 2 multiply by CH quantity is 100,000 in our current policy divide by 2 and cost of holding one unit for one year is half a euro so that is 50,000 and 50, 100,000 divided by 2 50,000 50,000 multiplied by 0 0.5 would be 25,000 now total cost would be 26,563 so 26,563 that would be total cost now the total cost using economic order quantity well we said that the economic order quantity as we calculated above economic order quantity was 25,000 units right now total ordering cost cost of one order cost cost of one order is 250 demand is 625,000 divided by quantity this time 25,000 and our ordering cost would be 625,000 divided by 25,000 multiply by 250 would be 6250 and our holding cost and we'll ignore minimum inventory over here also says so quantity divided by 2 multiply by ch and the quantity is as we said above 25,000 divided by 2 multiply by 0 0.5 so 25,000 divided by 2 multiply by 0 0.5 is 6250 and the total would be 12500 now did you see you are you will not be spending so much time on this and the other thing that the point that I want you to see is that when you don't have uh, when you don't have minimum inventory in the question okay that is ordering cost and holding cost and this is your total cost 26,563 and ordering cost and holding cost and this is your total cost you see you notice ordering cost and holding cost are the same and this will be like this when you don't have minimum inventory in the question so if you want it maybe you you could skip this part of the calculation also and you could write 6250 directly because in economic order quantity holding cost and ordering cost would be the same when you are not having when you don't have any minimum stock right now if you want to see the savings savings 
savings would be our cost from current policy which is 26,563 and cost from economic order quantity ignoring the minimum inventory on both of them that would be 26,563 minus 12,500 that would be 14,063 14,063 euros and if you could see we have calculated 14,063 in our previous calculation also 14,063 so if you want to calculate saving then you can ignore minimum inventory on both sides basically you can ignore minimum inventory on both the policies and then the shortcut would be that you don't have to calculate obviously minimum inventory and the second one is that you don't have to do uh, the holding cost calculation again because ordering cost and holding cost would be the same right this part of the question was complete you don't have to do it again I have just did that to explain it to you so that you understand it better you don't have to give it to the examiner right all right now let's see the second part of the question second part of the question or the third part of the question uh, or part c I, sh I should say actually Discuss the ways in which PKA Co. could improve management of domestic account receivable. So if you see, we are given information on receivables over here in the second paragraph. And it says domestic customers are allowed 30 days credit. But the financial statement of PKA shows that the average account receivables receivable period in the last financial year was 75 days well here's a question for you the company has allowed the customer to pay in 30 days but the customers actually pay in 75 days so which one would be our receivables days or receivable period well the answer is that the actual time that the customer takes normally would be our receivable period not 30 days 30 days we have a lot uh, allowed them but the customer may not pay always on time so as we can see in this case that the customers are paying late they don't pay on time and the second statement is saying that the financial manager also noted that bad debts as a percentage of sales which are on credit increased in the last financial year from 5% to 8% receivables so let's see what was the question let's see the question again discuss the ways in which PKA could improve management of domestic account receivable how many marks seven marks well you have to find what are uh, before you uh, before you uh, suggest uh, PKA that what they can do about the uh, receivable management obviously you have to find out what are the weaknesses first so you have just identified two weaknesses first one customers pay late receivable days are more than we have allowed them and the second one that the bad debts have increased from 5% to 8% so part C is part C so weaknesses a weakness for our questions or you can say the weaknesses that we have found in uh, in the company PKA the first one credit allowed and then you can give and you can say it to the examiner the credit allowed 30 days but customer 
day normally of this in 75 days and the second weakness was bad debt increased from 5% to 8% well I'm using bullet points but obviously you are not going to do this in the exam you have to explain it properly to the examiner that the company has allowed 30 days credit but the customers pay in 75 days and also the bad debt has increased from 5% to 8% and these are your uh, observation and then your suggestions what could be the suggestion well to encourage the customer to pay early because they are paying late they are paying after 75 days maybe we can offer early payment discount what else can we do maybe we should start strict management of our receivables what do you mean by strict management of receivables for example if the customer don't pay on time you start calling them you start sending letters to them you for example you can take legal action right obviously you don't take legal action normally for a smaller amount what can be the other suggestion maybe you should start the facility you should take facility of factoring for example you should take help from a factor and maybe before selling next time before selling anything you should check the credit worthiness right maybe maybe you should start charging interest on overdue debt right so you can write as many things as you want right so start your checking credit worthiness or uh, start charging interest or many other things that you can write but make sure again question is for seven marks maybe you can write five to seven paragraphs not more than that right if you write too much then obviously you'll be uh, wasting uh, time in the exam and basically you should try to get your easy marks first and then if you have time then maybe you should keep some space for the rest of the questions uh, if you have time then maybe you can write more all right guys uh, i think it was helpful uh, thank you very much good luck